Well, g'day there, traders and friends, market participants and enthusiasts right around the world. Thanks a lot for joining me on this Thursday afternoon market recap. Today's date is the 22nd of March, 2018. A very eventful session. We have just witnessed the Dow Jones Industrial Average closing down very close to 3%. That equates to a daily drop of 724 points, a very rare type of downward move that we have seen, but this has been that of the definitive break of this larger symmetrical triangle, which has been under construction for the past two months. Now, the reason for this video is to help you understand just what is going on with the financial markets and to give you some form of a platform or at least a blueprint moving forward, because there is going to be uh, a very big opportunity to position yourself for this upcoming and potentially very soon to be uh, bullish rise, which is going to take us on all the way back up to roughly 26,250. And really, again, the reason for this video is to hopefully address any concerns that you may have uh, as you tune in, or at least update yourself with what has just taken place during today's session uh, worth of trade. It has been an absolute bloodbath across the board. This is not only uh, relevant to the industrial average. We have also seen a major drop in the S&P 500. We closed down very close to 70 points on this particular market. And again, NASDAQ, it continues to be absolutely belted. Interestingly enough, the last update I gave you on this public YouTube channel was that of this particular candlestick just here. And this was the first warning signal that we had of the impending reversal to come. Now, going back into the market indices themselves, we have been using the Dow Jones Industrial Average as the mantelpiece. The reason why is because it has been under construction, or at least the chart pattern of the symmetrical triangle has been under construction for the past two months. And it really is the one market that's given us a really definitive blueprint in terms of structure, at least a market that is obeying some form of a structure. We've seen the S&P 500 try and reclaim its relevant all-time high. It's failed to do so. And again, the outlier of these three markets has been the NASDAQ. The NASDAQ achieved uh, very recently a new all-time high, but obviously that picture has changed and it has changed very, very quickly. So again, uh, just to sort of give you the overview or the context of this Thursday, Thursday afternoon market recap, it's going to be, well, where do we go from here? And again, even dating back to the pro weekend, uh, well, the pro class over the weekend, we had one of two scenarios that I broke down and personally, I sided with uh, potential or at least door number one. And door number one was essentially the breakdown of the symmetrical triangle, which was going to bring us back down to the retesting of this old support area, right? The second retest of this area, which was going to act as the platform for that next bull market advance, or at least that next upward leg during what has been that of a larger intermediate correction since we've established the all-time high on the Dow Jones Industrial Average. Now, again, I was thinking that this secondary retest was going to happen a lot faster. I thought potentially at the early stages of this month, it was looking as if we were going to come on back down and essentially retest on that second occasion. That didn't happen. Instead, what we were doing was just setting up another wave rotation or another oscillation within this symmetrical triangle. But now that we have definitively, as at Thursday, broken out of it, now comes the question, well, what happens next? Should, be, should you be looking to sort of uh, enter into a bunch of bearish trades or is it a little bit uh, risky to be doing so? And my answer to this, and again, this is my clearest and concise uh, sort of response to the market behavior taking place today, is that you should be looking for early reversal signals that are going to stem probably in this green rectangular box. When you see green rectangular boxes on my screen, this is that of uh, bullish support or buying demand down here, which is going to stabilize the market and act as that next trampoline for the market to project itself higher. The reason why I'm saying this, okay, is because again, uh, the sentiment out there is quite dire at this particular time and there's no need for you to actually buy into it. What we've essentially done is that since we've established this reversal up here, this is what we call a tweezer top reversal, it is very close to an island reversal, is that we still have this open window. So you see this little red rectangular box I'm drawing in my screen. This is what we categorize and classify as an open window. And essentially why open windows are so important is because generally what they do is, is that they act as a magnet uh, for price action moving forward. So essentially what happens is that for the market to move through this current phase, the current phase has been that of a sideways consolidation, which is just broken to the downside before we can unlock this entire pattern 
and come together as one and collectively say, well, is the macro trend going to advance or is it going to set up that of a second lower high or what will be that second lower high relevant to this high? Uh, is that first of all, we have to close this window. And as you can see, there's obviously a massive, massive discrepancy in price from roughly 26,435. And where we find ourselves trading at today, uh, breaking below the psychological round number of 24,000. You can see on my screen, the closing print as at Thursday was 23,957. Okay, so if you can understand this and find acceptance in this, what you shouldn't be thinking about is jumping on the bandwagon of this bearish breakdown. We've been expecting it, but what you should be expecting is that of a very quick reversal to take place somewhere in this green rectangular box. Now, this is just a general location. We cannot be 100% on this. However, if we start bringing up the rising simple moving averages, you can see for yourself that the industrial average has now definitively closed below that rising 100 simple moving average. And it doesn't really come as that much of a shock when you see the rising 200 simple moving average coming in more or less at the bottom of this green rectangular box. It has been a very long time since we last retested uh, the 200 simple moving average. What I want you to do in this exercise is just pay attention to the teal color on my screen. If you go back and have a look on the Dow Jones Industrial Average, the actual last time we retested it, it was all the way back in June 2016. And these types of uh, intermediate corrections potentially into the rising 200 simple moving averages are a very healthy thing for market indices. Okay, generally we get um, at least interaction with the rising 200 and also 100 on a much more um, on a much more regular sort of occurrence. Now, again, we haven't interacted with this since the midpoint of 2016. So this area coming in at roughly 23,345 uh, is a very nice target or at least an opportunity to begin changing, or at least flipping, finding yourself on the counter direction of the move, or in the minority, so to speak, if it is max bearish down here, if we still fall another uh, couple hundred points, my estimations would equate that to be another five to 600 point drop in the Dow Jones. But what this is going to allow you to do is open up the risk and reward ratio uh, for that inevitable and ultimate grind. It may not be a grind, it may happen very, very quickly, but a, a longer term, more sustainable move all the way up to close this open window at 26,435. So long story short, so to speak, I would not be concerned about the market. I personally, I'm not concerned about the market. Detach yourself emotionally from the market. We've spoken about this for a number of weeks, the secondary retest. We spoke about it in very clear and concise detail over the weekend and nothing has changed. Find confidence in support, find confidence in the second retest after uh, uh, you know a large sort of sell-off because these patterns or at least technical analysis really is built uh, upon the premise of price action repeating or at least the psychology of market uh, participants actually repeating themselves or at least price action following a, a sort of a common or a standard form. And this is the standard or common form that I am speaking to you about uh, as at the close on Thursday. So, so again, try and detach yourself from any fear or panic or uh, potential uncertainty out there. There's always going to be uncertainty in financial markets, but I'm trying to bring uh, certainty to you and a really nice uh, blueprint to attack the markets or at least to or at least a trading plan moving forward if you can overcome, again, a little bit of fear and uncertainty down around these lows. Do I think this is the low? Do I think this is the low on the Dow Jones Industrial Average as at the close on Thursday? No, I don't. It would be fantastic to see it fall. I mean, drop a little bit further, not long term, but short term to see it come on back down and really retest this 200. What we can collectively agree upon uh, right now is if we tag the rising 200, this is going to be uh, the best case scenario for shaking out both the longs and the shorts and then building that ultimate trampoline, that support, which is going to allow us to take those bullish trades or at least open up diamond positions that are going to have very low risk and very high return, which could potentially bake in, you know, two to 3,000 points, all right, as the Dow climbs all the way back on up to 26,435. Now, the same is true for the S&P 500. We have also cracked below that rising 100 simple moving average. We didn't have as much of a symmetrical triangle under construction, but again, the same premise has been widely understood by people. 
who have been listening to me, this is that support area over here. These red boxes, by the way, or at least the top of the red box is the 61.8%, okay, Fibonacci retracement level of this sell-off wave from this particular candlestick here, this dark candle, all the way to this one white candlestick here. This equates to 61.8. We have found resistance here twice. We've got a short-term little double top. I wouldn't go as far as to say that this is a symmetrical triangle. It is that of a symmetrical triangle on the industrial average. But again, we can say that we have definitively broken to the downside of a closing below the 100. And another great target on the S&P 500 is 2,584. It doesn't mean that we have to tag it to the spot. It doesn't mean that once we tag it, we're going to see an immediate reversal. We can overshoot uh, these general uh, sort of simple moving averages. Of course, we can overshoot them to the downside. But what you shouldn't be thinking about right now is the bottom falling out of the market. It may appear as such during today's session. However, we are still firmly within a very strong area of support. So I want to really sort of squash uh, any potential sort of structural concerns that you might have of the US markets moving forward. Now, the NASDAQ again has been absolutely clobbered down very close to 180 points. It's Gap City, or at least here between uh, today's session. But uh, going back into gaps, you can see obviously very clearly here, we still have this open window, 2,852. So again, if the S&P does come down to this 200, this will be the time uh, to begin opening up a bunch of SPY positions if you choose to do so, because again, this is the best risk and reward that we can possibly get. And uh, although we did tag the rising 200 simple moving average in the month of February, the last time we did that before this uh, was a very, very, very long time ago as well. It's not as far back as the midpoint of 2016. It was uh, back at the early stages of November 2016. And again, you can see the last time we did that, we got a very abrupt and very strong rally to the upside. If you consider this to be that of a larger sideways consolidation, this is going to naturally equate as that support area, even if you decide to call this that of a channel moving sideways. You buy it support and you sell it resistance. And then of course, if the market or that you know individual stock or ETF decides to roll at resistance, that's when you jump into a bunch of uh, put contracts as well. But right now, we're looking at this as a potential to be jumping in, not potentially first thing Friday, and it may not come on Monday, but when we get down to our designated areas, this has been uh, quite a long period of time where we've really essentially just sat on our hands, just waiting for the right opportunity. The good news is that that opportunity or is that that opportunity is getting very, very close. And we're pretty much or almost there uh, as at the close on Thursday. So I hope I've uh, sort of, you know, uh, ex extinguished any flames that may be burning in terms of concern uh, or any fear right now when it comes to the market. One other thing that I want to speak about also is that of uh, the US dollar as well. What we're not seeing is that of a strong breakout in the US dollar. I was getting excited about this uh, on Tuesday. You can see this candlestick just here, but a lot of this was negated as at yesterday. This was after, um, you know, obviously the Fed uh, decision to raise hikes another 25 basis points. You can see that very quick and sudden sell off in the US dollar. However, we haven't broken below this short term structural support. Today, we actually strengthened, or at least we held uh, 0.07 on the US dollar index. We'll see what happens here. But my general blueprint, again, and this is where it gets interesting, is that if we bring up gold, you can see that it looks and it appears as if we are in that of a uh, sort of descending uh, type of triangle. This is not a symmetrical triangle like I've described to you on the industrial average. But obviously, you can see here we've got a high, a lower high, a lower high, and then potentially that of another lower high under construction. So generally, when we get into these patterns, okay, volatility is suppressed and we're waiting for a volatile breakout. And the best way to look at this is through the lens or the eyes of a Bollinger Band squeeze. And we're getting very close to breaking out at the moment. The problem is, for me anyway, looking at this, is that I still believe that the US dollar is going to strengthen a little bit higher, or at least uh, you know up until that 93, 92 uh, sort of handle. And with that, it would be great to see gold to come on all the way back down to this green rectangular box. Also, I want you to understand that below this green rectangular box, look, essentially what we're doing is, is, is looking at X marks the spot. And the reason I say X marks the spot is because if I can bring up the right template for you, you can see that if you pay attention to this horizontal line, I'll zoom out and show you this a little bit better. Uh, here's the horizontal line through here. This has been uh, a very sort of pronounced... Uh, you know, area or location on the chart where it has acted as both resistance and support. And what we haven't seen since breaking above this line over here, uh, which is roughly just above 122, is the retest of support. This is also coinciding with the low uh, at late stage of 2015 into the beginning of 2016. And what is now that of a bullish trend high. So you can see we've tagged it once, we've tagged it twice, we've tagged it three times. And 
if we were lucky enough to see GLD and also comparatively SLV fall a little bit further, although maybe it's not going to, uh, this would be the location to jump into a bunch of long trades, but this is going to have to coincide with the US dollar strengthening. So again, pay attention to the US dollar. Uh, it has, you know, I mean, if I, if I bring it back up, you can see for yourself, if I bring up the weekly uh, candlestick for you, we are down 41 cents, but at the same time, we're still largely moving sideways. And this is coinciding with the US dollar, which has been uh, relatively oversold, so to speak. So we are looking for that natural sort of uh, correction, or at least that dead cat bounce back up into this box before we continue that of the uh, the bearish macro trend of the US dollar, which sort of sets the macro backdrop for both gold and silver. So I'm not rushing into gold and silver. I'm paying attention to it, but a good thing that you can do, or at least an intelligent thing to do, is to just pay attention to these Bollinger Bands because at the moment we tagged the top of the band on, on, on Wednesday, which was yesterday. But what we have done is also established that of another gap. Now gaps are, or at least this is what we call the suspension gap, obviously gold and silver trade around the clock and this has to adjust uh, for the opening hours of uh, the US market. So, you know, to a lesser extent, we have to actually close these gaps. We don't always do it in the commodities world or, or at least with gold and silver, but we'll pay attention to this gap. But ultimately, I'd like to see it uh, coming down a little bit lower before we see that upward conclusion. But again, we're getting very close to the breakout above 126.45. We pulled on down uh, 50 cents today, but again, very interesting type of chart pattern, all right? I just wanted to speak about that. Also pay attention to, uh, again, the yield on the 10-year on, on the treasury. Uh, if we start breaking above uh, 29.59 or really 30, you could say, I mean, if I just bring this down into perspective, if we start breaking above 30, again, this is the 3% short-term yield, or at least the 10-year yield. Um, if we start doing this, if I can bring up the right template, I'm trying to zoom out and zoom out and zoom out. I might have to bring up the weekly chart. But really what I'm looking at here is that if we start cracking above 30, which is how it's priced on the ETF, the next logical area of resistance when it comes to interest is all the way up here at 38, which equates to a 3.8% yield on the 10-year note. That's going to be problematic when in, in terms or at least for valuations of the broader markets themselves and individual companies on that if uh, the price to borrowing or at least the yields themselves rise. So pay attention to this. It looks as though we're undergoing that of a short-term consolidation. Uh, interestingly enough, as we are consolidating sideways, we are getting very close to that rising 50 exponential moving average. You can see it's coming in at 27.74. We closed today as at 28.32. So we still have, what's that? 26.58, uh, looks like 58 cents, so to speak, until we start interacting. Uh, with that rising 50. But if this is still going to hold up, and it looks as though if you just understand bullish trends, and if you can just look at the simple moving average, you can see the 100 crossing the 200, you can see price above the exponentials. Uh, this looks like a short term consolidation as we allow these oscillators uh, to reset from overbought conditions. So this is potentially uh, a massive warning signal, which sort of contradicts a lot of what I've said uh, a little bit earlier, but we'll pay attention to this. I still firmly believe the markets are going to have to uh, base. And it gets quite interesting because if the market's base very close to where they're currently trading and then they rally back up and they close the open windows, okay, and we see that the 10 year, again, yield, so to speak, more or less unchanged, sort of still drifting sideways, this might be the impetus if we break above, say, 30 or 3%. That might be the impetus of the markets to rally, okay, first of all, back up to close those open windows, but then to ultimately potentially roll and produce that first uh, sort of lower high relative to where we have been at the late stage of January, if that makes sense to you. So we're going to have to work in combination with these markets, but please think about uh, the 10-year treasury note. It's very important at this particular point. The reason for that is because uh, the obscene and absurd levels of debt, okay. Um, outside of that, uh, be careful in the financial markets. It's going to be very interesting. We've been expecting this. It hasn't come as all that much of a surprise. And, um, you know, it's very important that I update you on these market advancements. Personally, I am not short the markets. I've been looking and waiting very patiently for the markets to come on back down to set up that second retest and then to begin positioning myself again, potentially off from this rising 200 simple moving average which is going to allow us to take those really nice uh, risk and reward ratio trades of that ultimate gap closure, all the way back up to 26,435 on the industrial average, all the way back up to 2,852 on the S&P 500, and most likely for the NASDAQ to overcome its most recent swing high, its most recent all-time high. And that might be, uh, conversely, the green light for this macro trend to continue higher. But uh, as it stands, net momentum is to the downside. It is a seller's market. Uh, short term at the moment, but I do believe that the bulls are going to win out longer term speaking. Okay, so um, 
that's really what I wanted to say as at the close on Thursday. Now, if you have any questions, please email me, success at pivotpoint-trading.com. I look forward to answering any questions that you may have for me. I hope this has helped you. I hope again that it's uh, extinguished any fears that you may have about the current state of the markets. Understand this, over the weekend, we spoke about, again, the sentiment and the psychology of what's going on during this market phase. And really, it was somewhat of a lesson on psychology and how to detach yourself and to uh, separate yourself from the emotion of trading and to look at really nice technical uh, entries or at least locations on the chart that makes a lot of sense to buy off from prior to the majority figuring it out. And again, we've been highlighting and highlighting and highlighting this area uh, since we established the base over here at the beginning of February. And the closer we get down to this point down here, or even the 200 simple moving average, that is where you're going to want to act, okay? That's where the trades are going to come from. And they're not going to be bearish, they are going to be bullish, okay? So on that note, I've probably spoken a little bit longer than what I originally intended. My apologies for that. Uh, enjoy your evening, no matter where you are around the world, potentially enjoy your morning. If you are uh, looking at this at a different uh, time zone around the world, I hope it's helped you. I'm going to say farewell and I'm not sure if I'll be back tomorrow as at Friday. We'll see what happens during Friday's session. It would be interesting if we did see another six, 700 point drop on the industrial average because that would set us up very nicely over the weekend. Um, but if we do see that of a minimal day tomorrow, I will go into a lot more detail uh, with this over the weekend in this weekend's pro analysis class. And obviously what that means for the bunch or at least our top 12 individual trades that we follow over here on the left-hand side of my screen as well. Okay, so on that note, everyone, I'll say farewell and I wish you well and I'll see you in due course. All the best, farewell.